Highlighting the minimum and maximum in a line chart can help focus your reader's attention. Now we can manually select points or columns and change the color, and that's fine for static charts. But if your chart gets updated, then you'll want to automate the process. Let me show you how. In my data table, I have two extra columns, one for the maximum value and one for the minimum. And you can see in the formula bar that the max column is checking whether the value in the sales column is the maximum. And if it's not, it returns a zero. Likewise for the minimum formula. Okay, let's insert a column chart. And I'll make it a little bigger. We can see here that we've got the three series, the sales, the dark green, the maximum and the minimum. And obviously there's only one bar for the maximum and the minimum. Now we want to overlap these columns so that the max and min columns sit on top of the sales ones. So I'm going to control one to open the format data series pane. And in series overlap, I want 100% and let's make the gap width 50 so that the columns are a bit wider. The next thing I want to do is color my columns. Let's make the sales values a little paler. So we'll go with a gray color, this one here, and that will help our max and minimum columns to stand out. We can also format them. Now I've got a bit of a bug in my Excel at the moment, so I'm going to choose the max series from this drop down here. And you can see it's selected in the table, but it doesn't appear to be selected in the chart. But if you watch like magic, it will change color. So we're going to format it in this teal color. And let's do the same for the minimum series. So I'll select it. And this one, you can see it's selected in the chart. And you can also see the series selected here. Let's make this one this orange color. OK. Let's also add some labels just to these min and max series. So we want data labels outside the end. We'll do the same for the max and outside the end. Now notice that all of the other bars that don't have a value that are zero values also have these zero labels and they're looking a bit ugly. So one way to hide them is to format the numbers in our source data with a custom number format that hides the zero. So I'm going to control one to open the format cells dialog box. And then I want a custom format. And here I want a single digit for the positive. The negative will be a single digit. And then for my zero value, I'm not going to add a format. I'm going to leave it blank and that will effectively hide the zeros. I click OK. Now they're gone from my table and they're also gone from my chart labels. Let's format these chart labels so that they're in keeping with the columns. So this one's orange and I'm just going to make it bold so that it's easier to read. And this one will make the teal color and also bold. So all we're left to do is tidy up the chart a little. I'll delete the grid lines. Let's pop the legend at the top. And I'll just bring it up here onto the right hand side and we'll move the label, the chart title across to the left. And that will give us a little bit more room for our chart information. So that's the column chart. Now, if my data were to change, for example, if this value was now 100, you'll see the chart will automatically update and my highlighting for the max value has moved. Likewise, let's make this one 45 and my highlighting automatically updates. And if you were to add more data, the chart will automatically pick it up and these formulas will be copied down because my data is formatted in an Excel table. So once you set everything up, it's low maintenance. Okay, let's take a look at the line chart option. Again, in my table, I have two extra columns, one for the maximum and one for the minimum. However, this time, if the value on the current row isn't the maximum or the minimum, depending on the column, it will return the hash and a error. And we return hash and a errors because these don't get plotted in line charts, whereas a zero value like I used in the column chart previously, that would result in the line dipping down to the horizontal axis and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and insert the chart. And for this, I want the line chart with markers. And again, I'll just make it a bit bigger. So we can see there's a small dot that's hard to distinguish for the max value and one for the minimum. 
Let's go ahead and format these lines. So I'm going to use the Format tab here, change the Shape Fill and Shape Outline for the sales values. Then I'm going to select my maximum value. Again, it's not showing up as selected here in the chart, but we can see it's selected in the table. So I'm going to Control-1 to open the Format pane and on the Paint bucket here, for this series, I don't want to show a line at all. I want to show the marker. And let's choose one of the built-in markers. The dot is fine. We'll make it bigger, so I want it size 11. And then I don't want any fill, but I want my border to be a solid line. And this is the maximum value, so I'm going to go with this teal color. And I'm just going to make the line a bit thicker so it's easier to see. So that's my maximum. We need to rinse and repeat for the minimum. So let's go ahead and select that series. So here I want for my line, no line. The marker will be the built-in marker at size 11. We want no fill and a solid border in the orange color and we'll thicken the line up so it's easier to see. And again, let's add some data labels for these markers. So this one, I want it to be below because it's always going to be the minimum. I want the label to sit at the bottom. And let's go ahead and do the same for the maximum value. And this time we want the label to be above. And let's also apply the formatting. Go with the teal color and bold. And this one needs to be orange and bold. So all we need to do now is tidy up the chart like we did before. We'll add the legend back to the top and I'll just left click and drag it to the right hand side and we'll move the chart title across to the left. This will give us more room for our chart. And just like with the column chart, if I change one of these values, it automatically updates in the chart. So I don't have to do any further maintenance once my chart is set up and linked to the table. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. A big thank you to fellow Excel MVP John Peltier who showed me this technique. I hope you can make use of it. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.